Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DCL Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined this week by my good friends and Dreams Unlimited Travel agents, Ms. Teresa Eccles. Hello. And Ms. Elaine Edwards. Hi, friends. And, of course, back in the production nook, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Ahoy, hoy. And just a reminder, this show, along with all the content we produce, is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, of which I am one of the owners. And if you like our content and you want to show your support for us, please book your next Disney Cruise Line vacation with Dreams Unlimited. You're going to get the services of one of these and many other phenomenal agents who are going to step you through every every part of the process. You also get a shipboard credit up to $1,000 uh, and all that for the same price you're going to pay if you go through Disney directly. So you can't lose. DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com Okay, this week we're going to talk about what to pack for your Disney cruise vacation and what not to pack. And when we're going to talk about what to pack, I don't know that I'm the best person to talk to. Overpacker? I'm, I'm a terrible overpacker. And it's clothes and shoes. It's clothes and shoes. Because, like, I have to make sure I have two outfits for every day. Something to wear at night for dinner and something for during the day. Your jewels and your watches. and My, my jewelry, my watches, and my electronics. I travel with a lot of electronics. I've got to have my computer with me. My cameras are with me. Um all that stuff and I'm going through this right now literally as I'm recording this uh, tomorrow I'm leaving for a back to back cruise on the dream doing the three night followed by the four night that is our podcast cruise um, and I thought this time you know what I'll do is I'll pack early I'll pack early so I'm really because a big part of my problem is I pack at the last minute and so I'm not really thinking. I'm just grabbing stuff out of my closet, <laughs> folding it up and putting it in. Like this time, let me give myself some time. And I'll really plan everything out. So Do you I make don't. a list? Oh, uh, no. Oh, mental, no? Mental list. Oh, no, I have to have a list. And I check it off or wipe it out if I don't. I'm not taking it. No, I, no, I, I, know, I know what I know. Like, like I said, I know how many like, outfits I need. And I got to make sure that I have shoes that go with each outfit. And, you know, obviously one pair of shoes can go with multiple different outfits. But, you know. But you take things that you never end up wearing, or right? Actually, no. Really? Actually, I end There's up wearing... There's not something in that stateroom that there you may don't be, touch. There may be one or two things... But generally, no, I wear everything I bring. I wear everything I bring. Oh, I don't. So did really? it actually work? Mm-hmm. You said you're giving yourself time to pack early. Did it actually work? Did you pack early? Because I every- did pack early. I actually was packed. I was packed over the... Right before I, the 6 a.m. flight, and I'm still packing. I was packed. I was fully packed over the weekend, which is great. We're recording this on a Thursday. But here's the problem with doing that. During the week, as I'm in my closet, I'm like, I didn't pack this. I didn't pack this shirt. I didn't pack these pants. I open up the... Goodness. So I'm overpacked, is the moral of the story. I'm overpacked. And maybe I just need to accept that I'm an overpacker and, and just lean into it. But Well, it's good to be prepared. I usually end up with <coughs> twice the number of tops as I do bottoms, and I usually end up bringing home four that I never wore. Oh, somebody's somebody's repeating outfits. No, I just have extra right. for backups. Okay. Do you I'll, do backups, I'll, Elaine? I'll, I'll pack my like daytime, what I'm wearing at the daytime, my dinner, because you know it's nice dinners, and I'll do that for each day, but then I'll be like, three extra outfits as yes much. that's okay. what i do just, just in case, in, just in case my mood changes just in case and always extra panties always always i don't know if guys do that uh, no, no no i pack no I, we do well we do. i don't yeah. i don't i've got 
uh, you know, four days, I, four panties. Well, not panties. I'm wearing underwear. Okay. Um, but you know, if I'm like I'm gone for seven days, I make sure I have seven pairs of underwear. Oh no, fourteen. Really? I'm I actually well, more you, than you that. You crap yourself. No, it's more like laugh and pee, laugh and pee. Elaine, do you do you take <laughs> extra panties? A lot, a lot. Okay, I good. always come home. And I have like seven extra pairs sitting there. Right. And it's like, well, I don't have to like. Red panties, red panties, red, red panties, red panties. I forgot right. about that. But here's oh, the I thing. Oh, I can never forget that. <laughs> packing for a cruise is different than packing for any other vacation. Because if you're going to Disney World or even just any land vacation, you know you can run to Target if you absolutely have to. You cannot do that on a cruise. No, but that's true. You can't, but there are some things you can get on board that I make sure I pack because I don't want to have to pay for it. Well, I had I had an extra challenge this time in not overpacking. Um, you know, I with with the advent of COVID, I put on a lot of weight and weight that I've started losing in the last two three months. And I have two closets in my house that I call my skinny closets where all the clothes that I got too fat to wear went. And every so often, I'll go in just to see, if I know I'm losing weight, I'll go in to see, does this fit me now? Well, there were things that fit me. Well, good. And I'm like, hey. which is great, right? That's fantastic. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I can get into this. Um, including a suit that I have. And I have not done Remy in these past, you know, I've been on, what, four cruises in, since October. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't done Remy because I refuse to go out and buy a fat suit um, and spend the money. I wasn't, I just, I, I like, no, no. Um, so now I get into one of my suits. Good. I can go to Remy. That's awesome. I can go to Remy and eat a lot of food and then be fat again right. and not able. It's a one-time thing. So, you know, that was another challenge in in doing this. But it didn't help with the over, because now all of a sudden there's like 10 shirts and 15 pairs of pants mm-hmm. I can get into um, that I wasn't able to wear a month ago. So... Yay me. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I'm probably not the best judge to, like, pack reasonably. <clears throat> but the way I look at it, I'm not carrying the luggage. No. I'm not carrying it. So. If I it fits, then why not? If, it, if I can close it, it's all good. So let's speak to that so that people understand what happens to your luggage when you get on board. Um, When you arrive at the port, you actually hand over your luggage um, the very first thing when you get there. And you will not see that till you get to your room later. And generally, you can't go straight to your room when you board. It's not until later in the afternoon. So a lot of people um, will bring like a backpack just like a day pack that they can bring on board of anything that they need right away. And that might include a swimsuit, if you plan to go to the pool. Um, If you were traveling that day, you might want to change into like shorts and t-shirt. Electronics, like a laptop. I always carry my laptop with me. Any medications you need, that kind of thing. So that's something to keep in mind for a day pack when you get on board. Yeah, and like, so I always have my, what would be my roll, I call it my rollerboard, what mm-hmm. I, if I'm flying, uh, my rollerboard bag and a larger, like a laptop bag. And anything I'm going to need before my room is ready is going to be in there. Yep. And anything that I won't check, like jewelry and things like that, that I'm not going to, you, know, yep. you never check the jewels. We never check the electronic equipment. You never, ever, ever, ever check your electronics your computers your cameras things like that anything of value or your medication or your medication right. um 
you just don't you just don't do it just don't do it um but let's talk about what you can't pack so like you may think like one thing that i forgot the last cruise i was on um i brought a multi outlet oh did you lose it charger right something that has usb ports and it also plugs in it and as i was going through and it was in my Mm carry-on and as we were going through security they spotted it and they took it from me and i'm like damn i forgot can't bring that um this is a for fire safety they don't want you bringing things like that in onto the ship now what they do is they'll take it they'll write up a ticket and give it to you and then at the end of the cruise as you're leaving the ship there's an area that has a table full of all the stuff they confiscated you give them your ticket they give you your item back that's good um so no they don't like confiscate it and take it um they just hold it throw it in the trash while you're watching (laughs) yeah um I've had that happen at airports, it's sad. So that's something you can't bring. Another thing you can't bring on is something like candles. Um, because you can't have anything with an open flame. You can't bring, you know, so I remember one person talking about, you know, they wanted to have co- be able to make coffee in the room. They were going to bring their Carrick. They're not letting you bring that mm-hmm. stuff. They're not going to let you on the ship with that. Um, Your drone. Don't bring drone, a drone. Don't bring a drone. Sounds fun, but you're not allowed to fly a drone on the ship. Um, Along with what Pete was saying, with basically think about anything that plugs in and check it against DCL's published list. They do have a published list, which um, Craig can link to this video. And one thing that ladies always asked about is curling irons and hair dryers. Yes. You can bring your curly iron because it's on the exception list, as is your hair dryer. It's on the exception list. But any other, anything that plugs in, even like portable fans, um, pretty much most things that plugs in, they, they don't want you to bring. Yeah. And you don't even technically need the hair dryer because they have them in the stateroom, but straighteners, right. you'll want that. Straighteners, straighteners and curlers, yeah, you, yeah. Some people absolutely have to have that. But They're I guess. going to. Yeah. Look rough. Yeah. So a lot of people ask about food. And I have a funny story about this one because DCL's policy is that it has to be like manufactured, prepackaged, in sealed packages food. It can't be like anything that you've made from home and it's in Tupperware or open bags or anything like that. So on my last cruise, we were getting on board, we were going through security, and right outside, the metal detectors was a couple eating their giant box of Gideon's cookies because they had been to Disney World, stopped by Gideon's, got their allotted six cookies a person. Damn. And couldn't bring them on board. So they were sitting there eating them. And we we stopped and we talked to them and it was it was a it was fantastic. It was a fantastic story, but it's just kind of a reminder because I always buy six cookies every time I go to Gideon's and I bring them home with me and you can't bring them on the cruise. Yeah, I guess that I, 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 I wouldn't have thought of that, but on my first cruise, when we went to uh, Alaska, it was right after we went to Hawaii. And when we were in Hawaii, I wanted to buy an uh, a ukulele and you know, have that as my thing. I know Teresa's looking at me like I'm an idiot, I mean, but I'm just, I saw I saw the look that you gave me with it. But it's one of the souvenirs I wanted from Hawaii. Okay. And then you look up uh, DCL's policy, no and you're not allowed to bring any musical yeah. instruments on it. So even and there's a lot of people I know that are serious guitar players that like to travel with um, right. little travel guitars too. But that's one of the things you just can't you just can't have it on board according to dcl so it seems like a it seems like it's one of those things that i know it's very very minuscule that a lot of people it won't relate to but there is someone out there that isn't paying attention and just said well i can fly on a plane with it why can't i 
travel with it on a cruise. Because nobody wants to hear you play your ukulele on Oh, no, they, they do not. They don't something, want to hear me sing either, but they'll still hear it at the pub every single night. Something else, we had a discussion at work, and Jen, who works at the office with me, she always brings her own beach towels. And I said, to me, that's a waste of space because you don't need to bring your own beach towels, as far as I'm concerned. Do you right. take your own? No. There's no, no. reason to. But it's just something that she feels like she has to do. But I'd say, no, don't bring your beach towels. I, I guess I understand from, like, the standpoint that, you know, you, you can't... You, Disney provides it all, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're weird about towels and you would rather have your own personal she ones... She wants like, her own beach towels, and I'm... Because, like, I know okay. people that bring their sheets to hotels and Airbnbs because they would prefer that. Oh, so I get that. But uh, the one thing you definitely cannot bring on is do not bring on liquor you know if you traveled on dcl previous to 2014 and it's been a long time back in the days you could bring on liquor and go crazy and that has changed so now with the alcohol policy on board that you can bring on and you should if you plan on drinking um you can bring on two bottles of wine per adult over 21 and you can bring on a six pack of beer, but only in 12 ounce bottles. So you cannot, if you stop at like a brewery and they have 16 ounce cans, those are not allowed. That's something that would go into the hold. Now, you notice how Craig knows the alcohol policy quite right? well. Quite I do. well. And I, here's the thing about the alcohol policy. It's on embarkation and it's at each port. So there are people that will stop at the ports, refill their beers. re her up. Bring them back. Oh, I mean, that's my strategy with it. I already I already have it all planned out that what I'm going to bring, I'm going to pop off on Nassau real quick so I can make sure that I restock. I'm going to find out who doesn't drink on oh, board. just buy your beer on the ship. Right? Oh, I'm still going to do that. I just like to have some in the room because technically you are not allowed to walk around on deck with what you brought. I mean, you can take your wine or if you bring sparkling wine, champagne to the restaurants, it's a $25 corkage fee uh, for that. But like, you can't just... You know that alcohol policy. (laughs) What's that? You really do know that alcohol policy. I I try to know it up and down. And, uh, but yeah, so you can bring that to the restaurant, but you can't, you know, if you bring on your beer, you can't just walk around on the top deck with it. You can't take it into a restaurant. You know, I'm sure if you want to be a rule breaker, you can take your Dreams Unlimited travel cup that you get in your gift basket and just pour it in there. Uh, but at the I'm same sure time, if you see me on the next cruise we do and I'm carrying around a Dreams Unlimited travel cup, don't just assume that's what's in mine. It's usually it's usually just water because you have to stay hydrated on board. But uh, it is it will save you money if you bring your own stuff, too. But you just have to enjoy it in your stateroom, which if you're in a veranda stateroom, there's nothing better than having a glass of wine at the end wow. of the day and just looking out at the ocean. It's very relaxing. Now, you know what Walter used to do? Yeah, I remember. On uh, My ex used to uh, empty out a Listerine bottle and fill it up with whiskey. <laughs> and that would be his... He'd wash it out. He'd wash it out because well, you don't want, you know, Johnny Walker and Listerine... Septic. <laughs> well, and that's what I would say too. There are some people who swear by these clear plastic bags that are like kind of like camelbacks that you can order with the backpack and they're supposedly able to get through a metal detector and screening and that's how people get their liquor on board. But honestly, it's do you want the embarrassment of getting caught bringing something on board like that? Just oh, stick yeah. to the policy that they allow and do just buy everything else. You know. Okay, talking about clear containers makes me think of this issue. I say don't bring shampoo and conditioner with you because it's provided on the ship, and I love the products on the ship. Right. right. Yeah. But you, it's all large. unless you have special shampoo. And right. Conditioner, unless you have, you I, I do. I, you know, I have that purple stuff for my old lady hair, and you know, I have things like that. But still, if it's a short cruise. I can get by with what just the, what they have on the ship because I like that product also. But here's the deal. I've had people tell me that they bring in empty clear containers and fill them up with the product that's in the room. Right, because the uh, body wash... Uh, the lotion, sham- sham- all of that. Well, no, well, body wash, shampoo, and conditioner are in mounted containers on the shower wall. 
The lotion's in a big container, too. Um, and, yeah, there's, they, they do have, yeah. But, and so people will go in with empty empty tubes and... I don't know if I could face my stateroom host or hostess it, knowing that they're refilling that thing every day because I'm pumping it into plastic containers and storing it. I mean, people do it. I know. So it's one of those things. I think they've probably seen it all when it comes to... Taking that, it's like back in the day when you still got the little bottles. It's like, the, you oh, you need extra. you need extra. them three times a day. How fast are you going through those? They well, they I know, know. That, but they this know. is like, you know, you're standing there just pumping that old thing and filling your bottle up, and you can go down to the gift shop so, and, and buy it. it. And buy it there, but it's, it's twenty eight not... bucks for a little bottle. Just go buy it. All right, I just wondered what people thought on that. I you know, what else? What else can't you? You shouldn't you bring? Floaties, your own floating devices for Castaway Day. You don't need to bring your own tubes and floaties, do you? They're no. provided there. You can rent them there. You can you rent, rent them. them. And rent on them. that, when you leave Castaway or any of the other beaches you visit, do not bring with you shells, starfish, any plants, anything like that, um, because they will confiscate all of that when you go through customs. and i watched that um I f i'm pretty sure it was a day on castaway key you know little girl she couldn't have been more than seven oh. had been Collect. spending the day collecting shells and she was so excited in the line she was they were right in front of me the family was right in front of me oh this snatched away from her she was so excited and she kept showing her mother and father the shells she got and I'm sitting there going oh this poor little girl is going to get and sure enough as soon as she got up there they snatched they it said, out of her they, hand. they took it away from her and she was yeah. crying and the mother and father were like I, we don't understand you're not allowed you can't do that and the cast member was saying we're going to put them back for you so that you know they're a on the island to make the island beautiful. And, oh, well, that's a sweet way. Um, to... They would no, they were wonderful about it. They weren't mean at all. But still, this poor little girl. I felt so bad. Yeah. I felt yeah. so bad. The first yeah. cruise my husband went on, um, he snagged a little piece of a plant. Oh, of course. And was you know had it all wrapped up in a little moist paper towel. I'm going back on the ship. <laughs> yeah, it didn't make it back on. Yeah. Of course but not. But one of those. I mean, it's it's. It's you're deteriorating the agriculture and the wildlife, so that's that's why it's there. Yeah. Okay. Another tip: This is not a don't bring on board. This is a bring on board um, that I don't think a lot of people know about, but it is it is a thing that I've made sure that I tell as many people as I can. Um, if you're visiting Castaway Key, make sure that you bring some sea lice spray because there are times of the year when you might leave that beach and your legs are covered in bumps. And um, I went on a cruise with someone and I used it and they didn't. And there was a difference between what our legs look like at the end of it. So I would very highly recommend it's on Amazon. It even is a combination of um, with sunscreen. Like it's like level 50 sunscreen. So it works very well. Another thing I would recommend is, we've talked about bringing your medication with you. Don't just bring just enough pills for those four or seven or three nights. Bring extra, because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you might need, you know how you put them in their little old lady right. packs, which I do, but I always do doubles because, you know, I might be well, cast away one thing on Gilligan's I, Island or something. One thing I never go without after one incident Cough, cough drops mm. Mm -hmm. because I there was one cruise and we're going back now we're going back one of my first cruises ever and I woke up in the middle of the night with a coughing fit and it wouldn't stop no matter what I did it wouldn't stop I'm drinking tea I'm trying to do everything I could to get and it wouldn't stop so I eventually had to go see the doctor to get something I just went down to guest services and asked if they had any cough drops and they said, no, you've got to see the doctor for that. I'm like, it's the only thing I can do. I can't stop coughing. So at, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning, they wake the doctor up. And I go down, and he gives me a shot of Robitussin. Right. 
Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. I am never without cough drops again. Now it's not happened again since then. But you never know. But you never know. You never so know. I always have that. I always have band aids. Band aids and moleskin. Mm-hmm. I use that for like if I'm going to be on an excursion where I'm walking a lot, just where your shoe might rub, like on your pinky toe or whatever. It prevents, you know, blisters. Blisters. And- it's a lifesaver for you know occasions like that. Oh, that was like the I'm unrelated to that, but the one cruise I went on, I don't know if it was because I don't wear sunglasses because of my glasses or what, but uh, my eyes completely closed up and I couldn't open them again. I don't know if it was because it was so bright and the reflection caused my eyes to get irritated. I don't know if I got sand or salt water in something, but like. I, I just could not open my eyes and was desperate for eye drops and had absolutely nothing. nothing. So I was walking around without my glasses on with Kylie's sunglasses on just to be like, give me some sort of relief right. of any bright lights or anything. And I'm just stumbling into stuff. Got the and old, I've just had my eyes dilated. <laughs> oh, and the wor- I'm literally, the worst part is I was on the top deck filming i don't think it was a fireworks show but it was a christmas crew so it was like the christmas stage show that happens on the top deck i couldn't even see what was happening i just like pointed the camera and i was just like i hope i got this hope for the best and another you know. thing for women and teenage girls or whatever personal hygiene products if you think you might need them even or think you might not need them, i would still bring a, a little bit of what you need because you know you're out of your element. You're on a cruise. Your right. your system might kick in early, you know, and yeah. you might need that stuff. I know when we went to Europe, I uh, I must have packed four times as much because uh, customs were like, do you, "Do you don't think you can get these things in, in Barcelona? <laughs> they, don't, they don't sell tampons in Europe." <laughs> no tampons in Europe. And then when we went to Mexico years before that. Um, Okay, we broke the law. We brought um, tiny little seashells back in tampon containers. Tampon. <laughs> they were, hadn't been used, but sorry, Elaine. I, I was a rule breaker back in the early 80s. <laughs> wow, just always when Teresa's on a show, it's going to go someplace yeah. I never expected. <laughs> If there was a time to end this, it would be now. No, also, <laughs> remember, extra extra pair of glasses, you know, extra pair of glasses. That, so, no, that's a good point. When yeah. I Not on a cruise, but when I was like seven or eight years old, we went to the beach and I went in with my glasses on and mm-hmm. one wave came, knocked them off, couldn't find them again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're not, when you're not, you don't have an extra backup, you're finding an eye doctor. And I don't know if yeah. you're finding an Always eye doctor at Nassau. Anything like that. Definitely. Yeah. They have no eye doctors in NASA. Yeah. Just like no tampons. Can't buy them there. Yeah. They just, <laughs> you have to steal your wife's sunglasses yeah. and All walk right. around. That's <laughs> one too many, one too many tampon discussions for my taste. We're going to wrap this up here. Um, I hope that helps. If nothing else, we've helped you learn how to break the rules. And I, I think I'm going to change my tagline now from stay out of the damn lakes to pack extra tampons. Um, <laughs> never know. Yeah, never know. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week's episode of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back with you again next week with another episode of the DCL show. Have a great week.